favorite artist that I worked with, uh, Mateus Beerselt. Uh, one time I saw him do a painting. Uh, well, I thought he was like watching a movie on his main screen. And I was like, this, this fucking dude, the balls on this guy, dude, <laughs> at work just watching Netflix, dude, right? Like on his main screen. I don't think watching Netflix is a bad deal, but like having it on the screen, which you should have Photoshop. I was like, this guy, right? And then like, um, and then I got closer to his desk to see what he was watching, but he realized he wasn't watching a movie at all. He was painting one. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, no, this guy's a baller. But I remember I was talking to him about like lighting because I was so amazed by his lighting. Um, he was just like, oh yeah, you know, the Kelvin at this temperature reacts a certain way and this and that. And he's just started getting into super detail about like the science of light, you know? And I was just like, bro, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. But like, but that's, they explained why he was so much better at it than I was. But still, it still I am. Like he he's working at SpaceX. I mean, he's clearly a smarter dude than I am. Um, but yeah, it was just really fascinating to me. Um, this idea of like, yeah, the more you know how things work, the better you can illustrate them and create them. You know? Well, straight away, as soon as you said, "What is a glow?" It was like mind blow. It's like, oh yeah, what is a glow? <laughs> yeah, remember, <laughs> like you don't need to wait for me to give you answers to these types of questions. A great strategy is, I mean, don't get me wrong, like I, I think there's obviously great questions to be asked, um, but uh, here's a little bit of like me teaching you how to fish, right? Like I just gave you kind of like a, a salmon right now, you know, <clears throat> for so you can have for dinner today, you know? So your, your artistic hunger has been fed just for right now, but you, you need to learn how to cook and catch your own food is what I'm trying to get at, right? And yeah. one of the ways I explain this is like, think about how scientists think about it. They don't just like look at the stars and be like, what are those? Cool. That's the end of that. Right. And they just move on with their lives. They like, <laughs> they're like, they're like, what is that? And why is that? And how is that? You know, they start asking all these questions that lead to answers that make them understand all these questions, you know? And I find a lot, a lot of times students tend not to do that, that second part. They tend to like ask like the more immediate, more, uh, shallow question and I'm not trying to insult the question being shallow as a negative thing it's just literally what it is you know it's very like low answer. yeah it's just oh here's the answer yeah, yeah it's, is there a very matter of fact statement when I say shallow I know shallow has you know like negative connotations to it or negative like uh, you know uh, reaction whenever you hear the word shallow but like same thing with generic when people hear generic they think bad no generic just means general stereotyping same thing. People want to hear a stereotyping, they think immediately it's bad. Um, it's it's all relative. Like the, the intent is more important in my eyes when it comes to these types of terms, right? Because if I were to call you ignorant in the context of as, a, as an artist, uh, I don't think you would uh, take that as offense, right? You'd be like, oh, AJ means it literally, like the lack of knowledge. Right? Yeah, like a lot of things are gonna learn. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like, oh, he's an idiot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> If I think you're an idiot, I will literally tell you you're an idiot. And I've done this. I've told people that I thought were idiots, idiots to their face. And, uh, uh, but, but almost always still very literal, <laughs> like the definition of it, <laughs> you know? And so, so my, uh, my point is, is that like, when I say these like shallow questions, like there's, just, there's like, they're, they are like, you didn't take the next step. And that's really also very important to do, especially when the class is over and you don't have the opportunity to ask me every day or every time I have class, like, hey man, like I ran into this problem, like what are your, and I can give you that immediate solution to a problem that might've been haunting you. So it's really, it's also a, a good strategy to be very resourceful, is what I'm getting at, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and so again, like, so let, let's say if I was in your position of like, like, hey, man, I'm having a hard time painting clothes, but I don't have a mentor at the time. I'm just by myself. And I'm just thinking of this to myself. Then I will immediately follow it with, like, you know, um, questions like, yeah, like, what is a glow? Like, what is it actually? You know what I mean? Like, because this is, we live in a physical world, so there must be some physical thing happening. You know, we live in a physical universe. 
So there must be some physics at play here. What are those physics? And how can I represent those physics uh, into art or into some sort of visual communication? You know? Uh, and that's the part I think people will mix up a lot. And again, if you think about like how I think about art, I think about art uh, like a artist. I think about art like a technician, you know? Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so that, that's kind of more broader advice on how to approach this stuff and stuff. But by, but I keep getting stumbled up on my words, but by all means, ask these types of questions at any given moment, okay? Okay. I'll, I'll just let you know they're shallow questions. <laughs> <laughs> and then give you the answer and then explain why you should you should work on it on, your, on the outside. But that was a good question and most people don't understand flows. But it's really not that complicated. Uh, and if you have a good understanding of uh, lighting and forms and how like things work, uh, it's it's one of those things that you can learn really quickly. It's not All like right, thanks, staple. AJ. Yeah, it's not a staple to like becoming a great artist to do good glows. Like if you could do really good glows, but you don't know how to draw a person's face. No, I've got to be the best lightsaber artist. Get a job with my own <laughs> thing about shit. Yeah, man. you're not. Yeah, you're not <laughs> doing yourself any favors. Exactly. There's not that many like glow fundamental tutorials out there, <laughs> so I understand your your feeling of loss. But at the same time, there's kind of a reason why it's not as important. All right, any other questions? Um, I remember last week you were talking about how there were some unheard of studios, and I was um, wondering if there were any you'd recommend like checking out just to see some cool new work. Yeah, so there's a website um, called uh, Indiecade, it's for like an event that they have in LA. And Indiecade is super dope. Um, and it just showcases a lot of indie dev, uh, just indie dev developers in general. That's um, sweet. Also, yeah, but also just like, um, just going to YouTube and typing indie games, like top 10 indie games, top 10 indie game companies, like, you know, watching those types of top 10 videos, like I love those videos. Um, <laughs> Uh, and they, 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 I saw some science on that to like why they just pull you in. They just like pull you in so immediately. Like even if you have no interest in whatever they're talking about, <laughs> like top ten earthworms. You're like, whoa, what are the top ten earthworms? <laughs> I mean, you could have cared less literally minutes ago until you heard. I like that. that what if stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like what if? You know, like, yeah, what if, man? Let me right. know. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's really reptilian. It's a very primal reaction, um, but I fall for it every time. My like, wife was watching something. It was about like um, I guess some <laughs> some um, plus model, like this model that was like plus size, but she was like talking about how she's super healthy. I guess and that was the videos. Like someone was critiquing this. They're like, "Come on now, you know?" Right. Uh, and I was like, "What? What made you want to watch this?" And she's like, "I don't know. It just came in my recommended." And I just start watching it. <laughs> and yeah. I, I always got to remember, like, you know, whenever we think about our, um, like, YouTube and Facebook and all this stuff, like, like these things are deliberately made for us to stay on them, you know? And so it's, it's actually, it, it might not feel this way, but it's actually something that you need to combat against, you know? Which is, yeah, no, like, definitely. like, yeah, you actually have to fight against it. It's not that it's like, um, but uh, I don't know how to explain this the best way I can think about it. It's like, it, it seems like you're not addicted to it, right? It seems like you're in control. Like you're clicking these things because you wanted to click them, right? But the reality is you are at all, not at all in control. These, these designers are much smarter than you and have designed it um, to make it so that you get you get stuck onto these platforms. This yeah, is, yeah, it's some pretty crazy algorithms that go on. Like they track all your history and kind of like yeah, match they, it up to like stuff that don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, so, so what I 
so this ultimately leads me to back to answering your question about like finding the right resources. Um, the way that you should like, like the reason why you don't know about this stuff is because you're not engaging in it actively. Do you understand? It's not yeah. like it's hard to find, right? Like that's that's kind of the point I'm making. Right? It's not like it's really hard to find. Like indie game, like game 2019. Let's just see that. Right? Like look look how quick this was. Indie games 2019. And immediately there's like a huge list. This, right. first, one, this first one already looks kind of cool. Flight School Studio. Flight School Studio. Here's a studio you've never heard of that might be hiring. Right, right. Yeah, like, it's not like, yeah, it's not like the secret. I'm like, <laughs> yo, bro, let me tell you the dark web, dude, for concept right Yeah. You know, is that you, you actively are probably watching cat videos way too much. You're probably watching video content that's not actually helping you in your career. You know, right, right. A good way to good way to gauge this is go to your Facebook and scroll down and write down all the things that actually help you and all the things that don't help you. And if the number is in one side or the other, it gives you a good idea of what you're doing wrong. Right? Like yeah. if you go scrolling through and you see nothing about uh, but like people complaining about politics, which was what mine was like for a while. Uh, yeah, then you're like, wait a minute, I don't really want to be in this world. <laughs> I don't want to be in the echo chamber. I want to be in a cool echo chamber where everyone's constantly posting artwork all the time and it's amazing, right? Right. Uh, right. Like my Instagram, I started going through it and I was like, oh yeah, like who are all these people? Why did I follow them? And so it's just like how it is. Uh, YouTube, the same thing. Just go to your YouTube and just do that as well. Uh, there is a website called Glassdoor, which is really nice. So you go to Glassdoor. I don't know how effective this is for those of you who are overseas, but definitely it's still something to look at and you can just type in this is how to log in i think i might have logged in before find a job yeah this used to be easily accessible so i guess they're like no we want to make money though we want to get that money dude get it what it won't let me in like yeah let's just do it this way i am verified bro let me in okay so that so then you can type in concept artist you can type in 2D artist, El Paso, Texas. That's where I'm at right now. Um, <laughs> there is no jobs in El Paso, Texas. <laughs> Zero jobs. Let's see. Let's say I'm an artist in El Paso and I really want to make this happen. No, I guess nobody cares. And so how do I make it so it's just more broad? Yeah, this is different. They changed this. This used to be pretty broad, like you could just type it in and it would just like blow. There you go. I guess you just gotta get rid of the location. Okay. Because some of you I'm sure would be willing to move if they would hire you. Um, or like maybe it's not in El Paso, but maybe it's in like, you know, I don't know, like Austin, Texas or Dallas, somewhere I can drive to. It's still in the same state. But yeah, like there's like there's, there's all these jobs, all sorts of. Oh yeah, they totally changed the because they would even tell you the salaries. Oh yeah, no, there it there is. I guess it's just depends. I would not work for Cloud Imperium though. <laughs> they are the guys who are making Star Citizen. I don't think that game's gonna come out great, and you're gonna end up um, falling apart. Ooh, character concept artist for Rockstar. Yeah, maybe I would like to do that, except I don't want to work 17 hour days. Yeah, that's what I heard. Rockstar is pretty bad. That's the first uh, thing I heard about the game industry is when I was like, I think 10 years old, I had a friend of a friend who, you no, know, like my parents' friends were talking about how they knew someone who worked at Rockstar and he like quit because like the guys would like yell at him and then because he'd like leave early and stuff. It was brutal. Well, you mean he'd leave on time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he would like a nine to five yeah. and he would leave at five and they're like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm sorry. My brain's broken today. I, it's one of those days. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It, it's, I, I was joking. Uh, but it's not that you would have known um, what I meant by that. But like, it's, uh, it's, just, it's like they would say early, um, but what it actually meant was on time. Like he would come in at nine in the morning and you would work like an eight hour shift, right? That would be nine to five, or nine to six, really. Um, if you include lunch, is not work hours, right? Which most people don't. Um, 
that that is the that is the the joke, right? Is that right. They would leave when you're supposed to leave. You know what I mean? Um, and I had a friend who worked there too, and he he left for very similar reasons. And uh, I didn't buy I don't buy their games anymore um, because I don't want to support that brand. And you know I I know I make no difference, but it's fine how I feel. And so then. Um, because I know I don't make no difference. Because when when people were starting to reveal that Rockstar was working at this capacity, right, with the whole Red Dead stuff, um, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, God damn it!" You know, Rockstar is the devil. And you know, Rockstar employees are probably for the first time ever had a voice. Um, people went in droves to buy that game, though. And, right. Um, it was really funny to watch my friends who were like, we need a union in the game industry, but gonna buy that Red Dead. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like wait, wait a minute. You know that like people literally like lost days and lives with their family. Like, like, well, you know, they didn't have to work there. It's like, okay, cool. cool. <laughs> <clears throat> it's like, that's cool, that's cool. And so it's like, we're just okay then with this idea of uh, everybody working super crazy hard and not caring at all. All right. I mean, as long as the, if you if you if you say that that's what you you don't care about, then then I don't I respect your insensitivity. <laughs> but if you say that you care about the workers, uh, then you should act like you do. You know, you should demonstrate that you don't uh, that you don't agree with this, which I don't. Right. Um, I also you know controvert like I have a controversial stance on unions. I don't think unions are also the solution. Uh, there, there needs to be a solution, but I don't think unions are the solution. I, I can get into it some other time. But ultimately, what I'm getting at is that there is a problem, and there's no one's really addressing it. Regardless. Yeah, no, I'd love to hear more about that uh, union-wise later on. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, I can explain why. And I think specifically in the creative fields, it doesn't make any sense. Um, right. And there's already examples of why it doesn't make any sense. Um, like there are, are there are unions within the creative spaces and they suck balls. And so it's like, um, I can see the argument, like, which is again, a very conservative position, but I consider myself a left leaning just because of the most of the policies that I agree with are right, right. Or right are left leaning. I don't like this idea of left and right, but that's just how it is because not agreeing with unions was not part of the left leaning handbook. Now I got one. You're supposed to always agree with unions, regardless. <laughs> you know, right. and it's just like this again. It's, it makes people not think practically. They make make, make them uh, think in terms of teams, and it's so stupid. All of it's so stupid. And so right. anyway, but I'll, I'll get into that uh, maybe later. Um, maybe maybe later today or in this class. Maybe at the last moment, so I can talk about it thoroughly. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, any other questions though before I get into that? I worked in an industry with unions. It's complicated. Yeah, we, we can get into it towards the end of the class. I can explain. And it is complicated. I, I yeah, it's like, a very I, accurate assessment. It's not yeah, as simple as unions fix everything. It's it's really complicated because I was I did some background work just as a an odd job because my boyfriend does background work for the most part and he is union and I'm not and so I get to see both sides of the coin and it's yeah, it's it's really complicated. It'd be even more Interesting to see what would happen in, you know, visual arts. Yeah, I, I can get into it. It's, it's relevant to you guys' understanding of the, the industry, too, so it wouldn't be too much of a ramble. <laughs> it'll, it'll just give you insight, and then you can form your own opinion with that insight. But any other questions about any other thing? Or I have a question. Yeah, uh, go for it. For example, I... I have some process and I always see what's uh, what is going to be in the final. Uh, is that mean that if I want to change the result, I need to, to change my process? Okay, let me try to understand what you're, you, you just said. So you're saying that like in the beginning, you don't really have the clear idea of what the end is like. And then as no, you start... I mean, I mean, I have some, for example, a process when I do some... no for example illustration uh, at this point i do for example 
<laughs> again, for example, uh, line walk. After that, yeah. I do value, color, rendering, finalization. Yes. And it's always the same. If I want to change the result, so it's going to look in, in different way. Uh -huh. I see. Should I change the process? Yeah, yeah, of course. Changing the process will change the, the result. Absolutely. Like if I, um, if I did everything in line art, the result of my artwork may or could be different, you know, mm, versus, yeah. painting versus 3D, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is why I prefer designing, like purely designing with line art, because I think it is one of the best ways to just design. But I prefer painting to do full-fledged ideas, because that's the fastest way to get a lot of ideas. You know, so so I change it respecting what I want as a result. I use three D if I want something to be super realistic. At least in the past, that was how it was. I'm starting to use less and less three D for this. I'm using three D more as a production tool now, like to make assets, actual stuff, like for video games. You know, <clears throat> but back when I wasn't as skilled as an artist, I would use three D all the time. You know, to help supplement the parts I don't know how to do. But I know people who use 3D almost entirely and they are still great designers. So it's not necessarily uh, make or break either, you know? But I will say that designing in, um, designing something um, in 3D is not as fast as just painting it. I think that most people understand mm -hmm. and respect this, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. So yes, of course. Now. If you want a different result with the same process, that's just a matter of practicing different things with that same process. Like let's say you paint nothing but cars a lot, and then you want to now try to like learn how to draw like dinosaurs, or you want to start designing dinosaurs. The knowledge mm -hmm. that you have about cars is not going to help you draw those dinosaurs unless you're drawing robot car dinosaurs, right? So you would still need to like practice drawing dinosaurs. You know what I mean? And you can still use the same process. Nothing has to change, right? And now you can come up with a different result with the same process, right? Um, but will the dinosaurs look different like if you paint it? Yeah, they're gonna look maybe like more painterly, right? Versus very constructed, but you can probably simulate a painterly look, you know, mm -hmm. with your, already formed process, but it, it might be good to just kind of like have a couple of other processes on your tool belt for specific cases, you know? Cause I could paint with just a flat brush. I could photo bash, I could do 3D. Like I am like technically a great digital artist. You know what I mean? And I, I put digital there very deliberately, you know? Yeah. Because digital, doesn't just mean photo bashing or painting digitally. It can also just mean making things with 3D programming, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I am like, by all definitions that I can think of, a fantastic, if not one of the greatest <laughs> digital <laughs> artists out there, you know? <laughs> and, and I say that digitally with, like, with a lot of confidence. Now, would you say I'm the greatest designer? I, I would not say that. I think there are people that are much better designers than me. Am I the greatest painter? No, I think there are people that are much better than me, right? Am I the greatest um, photo basher? No. 3D artist? No, right? Uh, am I one of the uh, greatest like character concept artists? Uh, I'm pretty close. I'm up there for sure, right? Specifically character concept work. Environment? Nah, not even close, right? So there's a lot of things I'm not good at, but the things that I am good at, I'm really good at, you know? Yeah, and so, and and so, changing your process uh, to me is just another tool to doing what I do already, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I mean, of the course, process is another tool. Just yeah, another of course. Tool. Again, going back to this idea of like, yeah, of course, different tools are going to give you different results, right? Um, but like I like I said, it, it's important to focus on what you want, right? If you want to be the final, yeah. Yeah, if you want to have like a really interesting image and you feel like it's just faster just to paint it, which I've discovered with many different ways of doing different things, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like if someone was asked me to make a monster, I wouldn't ZBrush it first. I would actually paint it, right? But if someone asked me to do like a vehicle design, um, oh, what the heck? Um, if someone asked me to do a vehicle design, you know, um, I might not paint it, you know? I might mm-hmm. do some 3D because it'll just be easier because I'm not like a really skilled 3D, or I'm sorry, a vehicle person, you know? Mm-hmm. And so th- this is the kind of stuff that I like to get people to focus on more of. Um, but also, you know, caveat it with, of course, tools and technique and the change. I mean, just look at different artists and the way they start their paintings. Like, it matters to their final result. It just it absolutely does. But I have seen people who have painterly stuff start from lines. I've seen people who have really rigid and very calculated looking images starting from painting, you know? Mm-hmm. So I've seen both sides of the coin, but uh, I, like I said, I will say that there are some processes, in my opinion, that are more effective than others to get a very specific result. And the best way to find that out is to do it yourself, yeah. You know, and discover what you prefer versus what you don't prefer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because if uh, if I would have told you how this painting started, you'd be like, "What?" <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, you guys are here. You saw how it happened, right? And I'm saving the stages deliberately so we can look back at. It. Wait, that's right. It just started with the flowers and the lizard composite. <laughs> you know, and it turned out to be some sort of weird fantasy creature. I'm gonna give him some features. I'm gonna give him like some like a face. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Yeah, so. Any other questions? Uh, Yep, I would like to ask uh, about uh, applying, like when you are applying for a job and let's say to a big studio, can you kind of uh, describe a default portfolio let's say for a junior position i know there is no magic uh, recipe but like pretty there's much magic recipe. Like... <laughs> magic recipe <laughs> then even more is two mushrooms a pinch of salt and 20 years of experience um, right <laughs> <laughs> um, so so no it's, i'm glad that you're prefacing like like i said none of these these questions are are bad and I, if you want answers and you just feel confused um, don't ever be afraid of asking questions i know i'm like a big person about like you gotta focus on the bigger picture stuff but you know i get it too you know meet you where you're at um so there, there are some things uh, obviously the big the big ticket items that you should take away from anything that i say is there's, there's always like a larger principle and the larger principle here is that you got to be good and you have to know people Sure. These two things are one of the greatest tools to your disposal that could help you advance in, in your career. Um, why these two is because the better your work is, the easier it is to hire you. And the more people you know, the easier it is for your friends to give you a shout out when it's time to get shout out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so th- this, this to me is is the reasons why um and there are the only things you can really control you know you can't control much else in the industry um because let's say you are qualified for a job but there's no more position right like they Mm want to hire you but they can't oh man one of my friends for instance he had an opportunity to work overseas and as things were coming together um the country required that he had a college diploma and he didn't have one. And never had I ever experienced this, so I was not prepared for why and what this happened. Like, he, he wasn't mad that he doesn't have a college diploma. Uh, he still doesn't really care for that stuff. But mm-hmm. he, he just thought it was so, he, it was more like how I felt about it. He felt like, what a stupid, what a stupid system. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they, they're, deli- this country's deliberately, um, effing up their own economy by keeping people like him out of their country like we're doing the same thing here in the states we're doing a lot of the stupid uh immigration stuff again like 
Like people outside of our country are bad. America's great. We're dope. Immigration, what's that? We don't need it. You know, <laughs> it's like, all right. Like, it's not just a matter of like, they're taking our jobs type of mentality. It's like, you want people, you want people in your country that have high skills and they need them low skills because they, it boosts the economy. There's more commerce. There's more uh, people buying stuff, owning homes, staying here, contributing to taxes. It's, yeah. it's complicated. America was it's, on this in a way, right? Yeah, it's so stupid. Like even China recognized this and they were like incredibly like inclusive or, or sorry, exclusive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even they're starting to realize like, no, we got to like expand. And companies like Huawei, who got like the tariffs and taxes on them, or not the tariffs, not the taxes on them, the tariffs were the like any American company has to stop working with them, including like Android. That was like, that was a huge hit, dude. Um, because when you get to work with in, individuals like this, then you, you really advance your whole society, right? And so, so I thought it was very bizarre. So I was against it on principle of like, dude, you want people to get in your country. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be that easy either, but you don't want it to be that hard. College degree, dude, really? Like to do what he did? Like that's intense. And so, so there's stuff that I just, like I said, you just don't have control over, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but you do have control over, like, if the more people you know, the better chances you will get those opportunities, right? Like, right now, I'm art directing for a big company, and it's all because of a friend that I made literally 10 years ago, right? We keep in touch mm -hmm. every once in a while, like, every two years, we, like, catch up, right? It's, like, really that long till we really reunite. But that connection really helps, you know? Yeah. Uh, yes. And then being good at what I do, it was made it easy for him to vouch for me too. You know what sure. I mean? Sure. So this this is why I always encourage people to do this. Now, boilerplate, like what should you start off with in terms of your portfolio? Well, I usually encourage people to start off with like at least 24 portfolio uh, images. And 24. this could be, yeah, this could be broken up like this too. Like let's say, you know, you guys are doing these characters. Mm -hmm. If you do like five characters for my class, that can easily actually be 10 pages of a portfolio. Because you can okay. do one page of the final image and then one page of like the working up to that final image. That counts. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so 24, you mean uh, literally pages, not projects. Yeah, literally yeah. pages, yeah. So it's cool. like a pretty big portfolio uh, that can demonstrate your skills. I think that's enough. It's not too okay. little that you can hide behind like one or two really good paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause that's also could potentially be detrimental because they might not think that you are an experienced artist that you just kind of have sure. all your garbage art and you, you only did two really good images in two years, you know, mm -hmm. but if you have like a lot, like it demonstrates not only are you potentially not lying about your quality. Um, it seems like you could do it consistently. That's pretty important. Yeah, uh, the whole five years of experience you see on resume, like on these websites about like basic resumes that you should have, that, yeah. that's actually more to like get, it's, it's more of like a trick to make sure people that don't have any experience at all to apply, but yeah. they don't really care if you like technically have not worked in the industry, if you're good. And I've seen this happen way too much, too many times to just to think that it's anything else. And mm -hmm. what I mean is that, like, I've seen people that literally came right out of high school and started working. I've seen people come mm -hmm. right out of college and started working, like, a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's clear to me that it's not important, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Because an art director will see it and be like, no, we need this person. And they're like, all right. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes, okay, right? Cool. And so uh, this 24 pages now, it's uh, for like a big studio, let's say Blizzard, for example, or something? No, for everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the quality determines whether you can go to Blizzard. No, of course, of course. Yeah, this has to be good. Yeah, that, that, the quality determines where, the quantity determines when I think you're ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the quality can actually not be great either. It can be like, you didn't quality, and I still think you'd be ready. Because tw making 24 full pages is actually still hard in itself, even if it's yeah. not the best and greatest stuff in there. Uh, and then what you can do from there on out, which is great, is to slowly but surely 
recycle the old works um, yeah. with new works. You know, like mm -hmm. as you get better, you make new art, put the new art in there, you know? Sure. Um, that's, that's generally my advice on that. Cool, thanks a lot. Yeah, but I think 24 images is good. Uh, that, that's like a, that's not like a rule either. It's like if you have 12, you know, oh no, I'm not ready. Like, I'm, I'm just saying like if I, if you wanted like what I believe is a good yeah. standard, that's a standard to live up to. Um, yeah. Only because, like I said, because it's hard to even make that many images that you feel like you're, you're, you're ready for the a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I think with that mentality, brings the, the kind of stature you need to actually work in our industry. Okay. Because I, I worked, started working with the portfolio roughly that much, that big, um, and I kept on doing, cycling it out. Like I started getting interviews and stuff and not really getting jobs, but at least I was like, had like a portfolio and I kept on adding to it and removing images after you know, getting feedback a lot. Mm -hmm. It was really helpful to actually have work for people to be critical of. Yeah, at least they can consider you, whether you, they can hire you or not, right? Yeah. Like you have something to show. Totes. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Ahmed did a good chart showing an example. Oh, let's see what this is. Oh yeah, see, this is pretty clear. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with the, I disagree with the amount of variety, right? Because he's got like, like, I don't think sketches, I don't think anyone cares about sketches, <laughs> right? Like this is more valuable than just the sketches. This seems to me like he went to Art Center and this is what they told him. Yeah, Ahmed went to Art Center. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this, this isn't practical. This is just like what the school tells you to do. I, I would say that this isn't bad, though. Like, if you didn't know, if you had no knowledge and you saw this, like, I don't think you, you, you would have fucked up, <laughs> is what I'm getting at, okay? I think you would have been fine, right? But, like, I don't have a splash art. I don't have, like, sketches. I don't have turnarounds. Um, I don't have expressions. <laughs> You know, I almost only have single renders and variations and I get work all the time. Like every month I get approached. So clearly this is not necessary. And the reason why I think this is actually uh, adverse to your growth, like I said, if, if you just saw this raw dog and you're like, all right, this is what I'm gonna go by, uh, I think it'd be okay. Because he's showing really good examples of what the quality to meet is. So that, that's what makes me think this is great, you know? <clears throat> but the, the problem is, is that you don't get gain expertise when you do so much variety. At least these are all character-based, so that's, that's good. I like that. It's not like what you would normally see in a, uh, in a student portfolio, right? Where you see like all sorts of like random stuff, from like cartoony to graphic art to motion graphics, you know? That's way too varied. Um, but watch, let's look at someone that's really good. You guys know Paul Chedison? Chedison? Let's say if he has sketches. Hmm. Does he have expressions? Hmm. <laughs> I guess we can't hire him, dude. You know, like, I don't even think he has variations, to be honest. Like, he's like, this is it. You want it. Just take this <laughs> and I'll be like yes sir can I have another uh, he definitely does variations I'm just saying like he doesn't showcase oh yeah here you go here's some variation yeah but these aren't these aren't sketches like to him they might have been sketches but to all of us normal people <laughs> you know, these aren't sketches this isn't a variation this is just like Look at, like, I'm so confident with my design sense. I'm just going to show you, like, just pieces of this. Let's just show you that I'm the bee's knees. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
but like this is this is just a fascinating experiment to do is like find someone that you really think has good artwork like this guy is pretty good just from the splash right and let's just investigate their entire portfolio and see if this lives up to those standards and you, you've noticed with the two images like or two portfolios i clicked it we have yet to see that and i'm not saying that it doesn't happen but if you do this out of like a hundred like hundred artists that are really good at what they do you will see a clear, consistent pattern within style and effort. You see that? You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it makes sense. Like, yeah, not like, to take that guy literally. Yeah, I mean, like, according to this, this we need to see sketches here, right? So I think, like I said, if you just saw this raw dog and you had no idea what was going on in life, <laughs> right? If you had no other context, if you didn't do any further experiment on your own, right? Or research on your own, um, I don't think this is bad advice entirely because again, the content in which he's showing his characters, it's it's his work too. I think it's, uh, never mind, this top stuff's not, I thought it was his work, but I know that's not his. Um, this isn't bad. Turnarounds aren't bad to show either, but by the way. I think when you're early on, you should probably have some turnarounds, but it's not really essential as much as having quality images and variations. Variations and quality images, in my opinion, are all you really need. And then anything else, like all this other stuff, is just, you know, added bonus. <clears throat> Ahmed's a good guy too. I'm not trying to trash on him, man. Like I do know Ahmed, and uh, at least like through the internet, and he's been really fantastic. My portrait on my Facebook is a painting he did of me. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to knock him, but I'm like, I, I feel like if I were to talk, like, if we had this conversation, if like if we were on the same podcast and he would say this stuff to me, I, would, I think I would be able to convince him that this is wrong. <laughs> is what I'm getting at. I don't think he's stupid either. You know, I think he'd be like, you know what? I think you're right. He's like, yeah, I did learn this at Art Center. You know, that's what, what I know, you know. Um, I think he would be like, you know what, you know what, now that I think about it, like all of my jobs I ever got was because of this one piece of artwork that I did, which is like badass artwork that you might have done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't because of his sketches. Uh, I know like some studios are like real like stickler. They're like, no, we need to see all this stuff. They follow the books, you know? Uh, it's just not as often as you might think. Is what I'm doing. Does that help? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I don't want to say that there is no value of having all this other stuff. It's just like I feel like sketches, for instance, like the sketches especially, is something that you keep for yourself, man. Right, like. To have a portfolio, professional portfolio, I don't put any sketches to it. I only show my iterative like designs, and my sketches look like paintings, you know. And that's what I aim for. I don't aim for uh, like doodles as as a quality control for uh, uh, a portfolio. And when I first started out, I did have very much sketches, like the way that he's explaining it, and they were not very good. And I can tell it didn't help me get jobs. Like I had, a, I got a job from uh, Hasbro once on this painting that I did of a demon. And I thought, oh great, they're like maybe to do some demon robots or I'm sorry, demon designs or something. You know, this is what was going through my mind, right? And what I ended up doing was like some uh, football players for a Nerf game. And I'm like, what? Like, how did you get football players from my <laughs> demon drawings? But, you know, I wasn't complaining too much. I just thought it was silly. All right. So to talk a little bit about the, the union stuff and then just call it a day. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, actually, before we get into it, let me show you. So, again, having chaos... The first thing that I did was try to find the shapes within the chaos. And then once I found those shapes, then I say, okay, I think I see a character design. 
and then I just kind of like capitalized. So there's a huge step missing there uh, that I capitalized on clarifying the design. All right, and I piece up, um, and I just then I just refine to the end. Um, so the the union stuff. The, the value of the unions in general are to help people fight against corporate, um, like the corporations that they work for. Because corporations have a lot of leverage, especially if they have lots of money. For instance, let's say you are working at Burger King um, and you are you know, a good worker and you do really good work and all this stuff. And this company is not paid you or it doesn't give you benefits, or doesn't, doesn't give you all this stuff. So you're really struggling, but you're actually providing a service for the studio or for this company that actually keeps them wealthy. So it seems fair that you would also have some sort of stake, whether it's like helping with like getting like a 401k, getting like benefits of some sort. And so unions really help with this. They'll help like, they'll stand in for you. Um, in other nations, they, they do some really good stuff that are similar. Like I think in Germany, they do one of my favorite systems is they actually have one of the chairman of like the board of chairmen of these major corporations uh has to be voted in from the the employees from the workers so the workers vote for their own to actually have a voice within the company and they do it like i don't know how often they do it, but they, do, they vote pretty often so if you want to stay there you got to like pull through for the workers otherwise you get the boot someone else will come in so there's real incentive for both the company to like work with the workers because the workers have somebody that's there that actually owns owns a stake. And it's also good for the person to fight for the people because then they can keep that job and keep fighting for the people right? and keep that winning that stake. I think that's actually a really clever and very smart solution. Um, but like uh, unions work in places like construction because let's say you have somebody who's been working for years as a construction worker they understand the ropes of the construction. They understand the dangers. So seniority should be rewarded in this way. And sometimes if you don't have a union, it doesn't ever get rewarded. And in this way, it can be. And then also like the dangers of working in construction are real. So then having unions help fight for healthcare uh, makes a lot of sense. And then all this stuff like with, you know, having people come in and just take senior jobs. Like, again, it seems unfair for people who have been building uh, for years, decades even. And so then why is it complicated for the creative field? And it sounds all great for us. Why can't we reward? Well, the difference is this. There are artists that are better than me that have yet to ever have a job in this industry. This is just a fact. Uh, I know I follow many of them that are younger than me too. They're like probably 20 years old. They're better artists. They are faster even potentially. They, they exist. They're out there. Some of you guys could be potentially one of these people, right? <clears throat> if a union was in place, um, there is a chance that you might not be able to take my job, even though you're better qualified, nor get a job because of other people like me that are senior and have legacy over you, and that will make it harder for you to get a job. And why, why is this bad? Well, it stifles creativity within the fields. And this exists already in the film industry. This is why a lot of the movies look the same. You look at like Art Station and you look at all these great places of art and you're just like, why do all these movies look the same? Why, like there's so many great artists, why aren't they making new stuff? Why isn't there new things in there? It's because you have to pay like, I think it's eight grand to even get into the union. Then you have to actually be able like to potentially be grand, like grandfathered in. And so you literally have people who've been working in, the, in these industries for like, you know, since the beginning. Uh, not wanting to give up their seats. And I've worked with some of these people, and they're really good people. Some of them are my friends, but if I were to be honest, they're really not good compared to people that I know, compared to even students that I teach. But they have those positions because of unions. And this is one of the greatest detriments, um, specifically in the creative fields. I can't speak for any other. And this is why I think it's, it's really kind of like a complicated issue. Because at the same coin, or on the other side of the coin, uh, these people should deserve some legacy, some, some uh, opportunity to kind of reap the rewards of their experience and their service, right? So this is not an easy solution 
to just be like, well, you know what? You guys are all a bunch of grandpas. Let's just get the new blood in here and get you guys out into the streets, <laughs> you know? Because that's not great either. I don't like that either, right? And so it's a real problem. And, um, and then you also have this problem in the creative field that's different where let's go back to construction. You know, if I'm working on a construction job with me and my, my buddies and we're unionized and all that stuff, all the benefits are helpful. We get the blueprints. We build the house. We build the roads. We build the thing. Everything's there. And we just build it. There's a time, maybe there's some delays, maybe there's some early finishing, but it's never something that's so pushed back or so, so changed, radically changed that we then have to kind of like start over. In the creative fields, that is not true. You can be working on a first person shooter like for two years, and then all of a sudden, the like first person shooter, oh, let me use a better example, uh, Battlegrounds. Like you're making a Battlegrounds kind of game, 100, like 100 v, like 1v1, or like 100 person Battlegrounds, right? Arena, uh, last to win survives, or the last to survive wins. And we're making this game because right now it's super popular. But in two, it takes two years to start to develop and developing, and then about a two year mark, for whatever reason outside of our control, people are now onto auto chess, right? And we release our game, or we, we, we can project the release of our game, it's gonna actually, it's going to do terribly. This is what happened with the MMO bubbles. This is what happened with like the mobile bu the MOBA bubbles, right? So this is, this is the other problem with the creative fields is that these types of things are never guaranteed, where construction job is guaranteed. You understand that money is gonna come in because somebody wants you to build a thing and they know how they want to build it because they've already paid for somebody to design it, you know? There's only so many ways you can F up building a road, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it'll be really funny if like you're building a road and you're like, you know what, we're done building roads, we're gonna build sky streets. Regular roads are out of, out of fashion, <laughs> you know, that doesn't happen. And so <clears throat> this is another reason why uh, unions can really not protect us because that is not necessarily, because now the company is punished for the changing of the climate of the, the genres that are interesting and more interested by the consumers. And this is why, again, we do need a solution. Uh, I don't know what the solution is that is based on these types of parameters, but I do have a solution. And I think the solution is smaller teams. You need smaller, scrappier teams. People need to stake, take more ownership to what they need to do. You need more concept art studios need to form by just, a couple group, like like five or six people, make their own studio and then just take some of those jobs as a, as a small team. Uh, staying small, staying lean um, is one of the better ways because then that money comes in at the capacity that it comes in, you can spread it out in a meaningful way where you can get 401ks, you can get, uh, what you call it, um, uh, all the benefits that you get from unions. And also keeping it small and scrappy means you have to compete against other scrappy and small teams which will hopefully potentially keep you on your toes because you're not necessarily protected by legacy anymore and seniority. And so this is my, this is what I think is the solution that makes sense. If there's a better one, man, I'm all for it, man. Cause I, I do think though people are going to F and these are my friends. These are like, even the people that I was saying, like who are older, who aren't good, I don't want them to suffer either. And it's like, we need a solution. And I don't think anyone's talking about it, honestly. And there, it's like a very binary one. Like we need a unions or not. It's like, no, there, there needs to be more uh, education. And maybe there's some form of a union that's very um, hands off in terms of like really effing up. It's just like, look, if you're gonna pay my, the people of these employees, just give them a lease, um, uh, pay them overtime and like, and give them healthcare at least, <laughs> you know? So if, they, if this person t still works like 20 hours and that's by their choice, the union can come in there or the government uh, regulation can come in there and be like, hey, you, you have to pay this person X amount of dollars. And in California, for instance, this exists. Uh, if you work overtime, it's mandatory to pay them overtime. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you have an internship, it has to be paid. There is no unpaid internships. Um, if you have... Um, if you work long hours, you have to take two breaks. 
uh, and a lunch. And if it's super long, you have to have a second lunch and another break. It's mandatory. Like the companies get fined if they find out that people are not taking breaks and are not taking lunches, even if that person doesn't want to. It's against the law in, in California. So like there's ways to kind of like indirectly control it in a way where you can still kind of have like a like well, some solutions, but it's just like, uh, you know, I don't know what the laws in New York are for this. Cause it seems like rock stars up in New York. New York. Well, I know that like their main hub is in, in overseas, isn't it? So I don't know, man, like it's, it's, it's a thing. So, <clears throat> and people still like don't pay the fines be or some people don't pay their employees because they, they, they reckon, they recognize that paying the fines is actually cheaper. So they'll, they'll just cut, they'll just write it off as a business expense to actually just pay the fines than actually pay their employees, uh, healthcare and reasonable rates, which is crazy. Right. And so it's like, I don't know, man, like you, there needs to be larger solutions and I don't know what they, they are. I'm not a politician, but I can tell you, I can see the problems with the unions as well as some of the solutions that unions present. But just blatantly just shouting out unions are bad and unions are great is to what Nicole said. That's it's not that simple. It's really complicated, and we need a complicated solution for a complicated problem. <clears throat> in Australia, it's law to pay overtime slash interns as well. But in industrial design, at least the workers are uh, at least the designers are shitty and make interns work forty hours a week for free. Yeah. See. Oh man, it's all kind of, there's all kinds of shitty everywhere, man. <laughs> in Poland, internships are rarely paid. In advertising, for example, a lot of overtime and almost never paid. Yeah, like, that's all trash, man. People should be paid for their work, for sure. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. Like being scrappier, working for yourself. Uh, these, these are some of the more immediate solutions. Uh, people making money on their own hours and their own time and their own effort. Uh, it seems to be the wave of the way that we're going with Gumroads and Patreons and YouTube monetization. Um, artists and creatives are finding alternative ways to supplement the, the potential bad work situations. And I think this is ultimately the most immediate solution. Looking forward to tools improving so smaller teams can make better games and less manpower. Yeah, it's already here. It's just like we're on the, we're on the uptick of the exponential curve. So we're not going to see it into full effect probably until four years from now. Um, so meaning like when exponential curve is like this, it starts off like pretty that, and then like it starts to get like pretty obvious that this is how it, is, how it should have been. And like we're right right here, you know? Like it's going up and it's going up rapidly. With the tools like Unreal, all of the major softwares are free, including uh, or, or have some sort of subscription model so it's even cheaper. Uh, the technology that we use is even better. Like everything is getting better. It's all lining up perfectly. And so keep this in mind. I'm not saying that if you want to join a union here in the States that you shouldn't. I'm just saying this is what it is. And if you find these things are deplorable, then that's up to you. If you don't, that's also up to you. I personally uh, am a fan for helping workers out however that looks and however that is formed, whether that is through government subsidies, that is whether that's through unions or whether that's through the kindness of companies getting their shit together and actually caring about their employees. Whatever the solution is, I'm all for taking care of the little guys, right? Um, I don't care what it's called. And as of now, that's just what it's about. So, anyway. <clears throat> Peace out, guys. Have a great weekend. Hope you guys enjoyed the demo and the lectures and the q and I'll see you guys next week. Fresh and Adam. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.